Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Liu, and today I will be talking about Becker muscular dystrophy, otherwise known as BMD. In this video, I will be talking about what Becker muscular dystrophy is, some of the common signs and symptoms, a typical age of onset, and other reasons for why someone may develop BMD. I will also be going more in depth about the diagnosis process and how doctors use different tests to determine this specific type of muscular dystrophy. Lastly, I will go over some of the common management practices that slow the progression of BMD. What is BMD? BMD is a genetic disorder that makes the body's muscles weaker and smaller. This disease is a much slower and progressive disease in comparison to Duchenne muscular dystrophy, the most common type of muscular dystrophy. With proper treatment, individuals with BMD can live well into their 40s and 50s. This diagram depicts a variety of symptoms a person may experience with BMD. These symptoms include muscle aches, also known as malaysias, muscle weakness in the hips, pelvis, thighs, and shoulders, difficulty walking or running, abnormally large calves, they look big but are actually relatively weak because they are full of scar tissue. They may experience abnormal urine color, possible changes in the heart muscles, and impaired activities of daily living, otherwise known as ADLs. This is a progressive disease, so some of these symptoms may not be present early on, but may develop over time. The typical signs and symptoms of muscle weakness usually occurs between ages 5 and 15. However, individuals as old as 60 can be diagnosed with BMD. Sometimes cardiomyopathy is the first symptom. Typically, this occurs in males. Um, children with BMD tend to start walking later than most kids. What causes BMD? BMD is caused by a mutation in the dystrophin or DMD gene. Dystrophin is an essential protein in muscle function, development, and strength. BMD is also known as an X-linked disease. For those that don't remember, boys have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Girls have two X chromosomes. It is known that two-thirds of patients with BMD are males and that females are normally carriers of the disease and may pass it on to their child. Some people may have a mutation or variation that is not from their mother, and this accounts for the other third of all BMD patients. In the next part of this video, we will be going over diagnosis. Alongside family history and current signs and symptoms, the three tests shown on this slide are used to determine if someone has muscular dystrophy, and if so, which type. Creatinine kinase, or CK, levels are used to measure the degree of muscle degradation because this is released in the blood when muscle is being destroyed. Muscle biopsies are relatively non-specific toward muscular dystrophies, but reduced amounts of dystrophin typically indicate BMD, and lack of dystrophin indicate DMD. Genetic testing is the best indicator of a patient having BMD. Through either deletion, duplication, or point mutation testing, doctors can identify gene malfunction. Some other things doctors look out for are abnormally developed bones, specifically in the chest and back, cardiomyopathies, congestive heart failure, fat and connective tissue in calf muscles, and muscle wasting around the body. Electromyography testing may also be used to test the health of muscles. So how do we manage BMD? Currently, there are combination treatments that slow the progression of BMD and may alleviate symptoms. However, there is no cure for BMD. The typical medications that are used are corticosteroids. The most common are prednisone or prednisolone. They're prescribed because they slow the decline of muscle strength. One thing to look out for is the side effect of weight gain. Patients with BMD have weaker muscles and may not move around as much. It is important to keep a low caloric intake to prevent further stress on weakened muscles and the heart. There is some evidence for ACE inhibitors and beta blockers having some therapeutic effect, but the use of these medications is uncommon. Because patients with BMD do not move much, many health professionals advise supplementation of vitamin D and calcium. Some of the physical therapy options include stretching and minor exercises to maintain range of motion and prevent contractures. As muscle deteriorates, especially in patients with muscular dystrophy, the fixation of joints occurs over time, which will impede mobility, causing major discomfort. Some individuals may need assistive devices such as braces and wheelchairs if they do get contractures. 
Over time, breathing muscles may weaken leading to less optimal sleep. BiPAP machines will help with this. Cough assist may also be utilized to help relieve buildup of mucus in the respiratory tract. Occupational therapists commonly address ADLs and how patients are going to adapt to disease progression. Speech therapy is very important for patients that struggle with swallowing. If severe enough, patients may be referred to gastroenterologists to address GI motility problems. Surgery is normally a last line option for relieving contractures and scoliosis. One example is the tendon release procedure that treats ankle contractures for a person still able to walk. Some other therapies include gene therapy, exon skipping, and stem cell therapy. The most important thing to remember is that patients with BMD must avoid anesthesia as it puts them at risk of death. Both patients diagnosed with BMD or individuals that are carriers of the disease are at risk of developing cardiomyopathy, so it's important that they have their heart evaluated at least every other year. While building and maintaining muscle is important, moderate exercise has shown to be most effective due to the risk of cardiomyopathy. Doctors recommend that patients do not go to the point of exhaustion. Casual swimming or walking prevents muscle strain and injuries. For parents of children with BMD, take watch of their mental health. Being unable to participate in sports, recess, etc. can be very taxing. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either email below. And here are the references I use for this video.